I am here with Angie Ferraro, who is a member of the Daughters of the American Revolution, and we're here to find out more about the organization as well as some of Angie's artwork. So, Angie, how did you find out about the DAR? Well, Drew, I uh, am originally from Omaha, Nebraska, and uh, I knew that my family had a strong lineage from long, long ago. My mother would talk about it a lot, and I just decided one day uh, that I would get on my little phone and look up the DAR. And that's really, it was as simple as that. I contacted uh, the Daughters of the American Revolution in Omaha, one of the chapters, and uh, the registrar called me back immediately, and it went, that's, it went from there. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was very simple, very easy, and uh, yeah, and uh, it, you know, it, it, it just took a little bit. I had a lot of research already done before that, but uh, the contacts are easy, and they are very willing to help you. So um, if you haven't done your research and you want to join, do they help you do your research? Exactly. Okay. If someone, uh, for example, uh, many of our members go into the Clayton Library a few times a year and we will have people come in and they think that they have an ancestor uh, from the days of the Revolutionary War or someone that supported the Revolutionary War, but they're not real sure and they have mm. names. and so, so we will work with them on the Lineage Committee. We will work with them. and. And, and try to find the connection, because they have to stair-step it, you know, like mm. my parents and my parents' parents, and you know, and you have to go, you have to have a direct lineage. And um, we're more than willing to help. And all of the ladies are, we're a good group of, of women that just, we're excited for everybody. You know, it's not just like, I want my paper, if we can do that for them, then, you know, they're just, uh, they're, they're honored to be part of the American history. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. for uh, the requirements, you can either trace your lineage or uh, someone who helped aid the revolutionary Ex cause? Or? Exactly, it okay. could be a soldier, or it has to be a direct descendant, though. Okay, uh, okay. and then the bloodline has to be there. Uh, and, you know, we, we verify it. Uh, it goes into Washington, uh, but it's being verified by our genealogists out there, but you have to have you know, the birth certificates, death certificates, marriage certificates, I oh, mean, wow. that type of a thing. And, uh, but they, it is, it's very, very good uh, to be able to have the resources because a lot of names are the same from back then. You know, you have to have the dates and stuff because people, um, cousins are married cousins and the names are, you know, similar. And there's many Elizabeths. <laughs> <laughs> there's many, you know, James and all, all of that. So, yeah, you know, the dates are extremely extremely important and um, so we go we go through that and it can be a woman too people think it's just a soldier but it can be like a woman that aided in the revolutionary war like uh, bandages or uh, the food or mm -hmm. you know something where they supported uh, the military or um, you know or, or did anything like um, uh, aided in any way to support the soldiers for our independence yeah. oh, awesome yeah okay. Even like if you were a, if your ancestor was a pirate or something yeah. helping the cause. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some people just think because there's something up in the attic that they can belong, but it's not. No, no, no. Wait, you know. And the the and the thing, Drew, about it is is um, the, to keeping it authentic mm -hmm. is so important because it keeps the organization to what it's supposed to be, and it's not that we're you know trying not to bring somebody in or not. Sure. It's just that. That's the authenticity of, of the DAR. It's in the name it, it, of it, Yeah, <laughs> and, and exactly, and and we and we want to keep it that way, because we, we were founded, you know, our anniversary is coming up actually of the DAR, October eleventh of eighteen ninety, you know, wow. and we're in three thousand chapters. We're all over the world, and uh, people don't realize that we're over. There's a, I'm one in a million, one more than a million <laughs> now, and. It's, a, it's, you know, it's quite an organization, it really is. Wow. So you mentioned we're coming up on the 100-year mm -hmm. anniversary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'll be the 131st now. Oh, 131st, okay. Yeah. So tell us a little about the history of the organization, and I, I vaguely remember something about it being an act of Congress that brought it into... Right, right, and, uh, you know, but it's basically, a, uh, we're, we're a lineage or you know, we're a lineage organization, but non-profit, okay, and, but we uh, are founded in uh, 
patriotism, education, you know, uh, things for our, our community. And it's, you know, uh, it, it's not, it's an organization that provides to make our country, you know, better and to preserve the rich history of our ancestors. And it is, um, it continues to grow. I mean, we're always getting new members and uh, you have to be 18 years or older to be in the DAR. But uh, children, boys or girls, can belong to the children of the American Revolution, mm -hmm. and which is wonderful because then they start, and then when they, they progress, then they can go in to the Daughters of the American Revolution, and the boys, if they so choose, they could go into the Sons of the American Revolution. But uh, yeah, and so we do a lot of the educational programs. We just finished uh, doing a teacher's uh, a pick me up jar for the teachers who wrote notes of encouragement and stuff for the teachers to the area schools and we do a lot for the military. Mm -hmm. We are always, you know, we send packages overseas and, uh, but we're a real service organization to, as simple as, um, you know, uh, preserving the gravestones, cleaning up the cemeteries or then there's a race across America. There's just all sorts of, I mean, if you want to do something, there's a job for you. There's something for everyone in the DAR. Mm -hmm. There really is. There really is. I remember reading something about there being a performance hall uh, on the DAR, and they have comedians and musicians play. Is that in DC? Yeah, yeah in uh, yeah Continental Congress. Yeah, they have the yeah, they have that. I believe it's in June, and it's a it's a big deal. You know, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's located uh, very near the, the. I think it's. I have not been able to go there yet. But uh, I believe it's near the Department of Interiors. It's a beautiful building. It's wow. been restored and everything. And uh, yes, it's just. Uh, I mean, it's a grow. It's a growing organization. It's always changing. Always coming up. We're even in our chapter here in Friendswood. We're always trying to make it better. You know, always trying to grow and come up with new ideas or new growth or new. And some and some new person comes into our chapter and. My gosh, they have a talent. They have something <laughs> to share that we weren't even expecting. You know? yeah. Oh, interesting. So, uh, it, basically, if you have a certain talent, they'll mm -hmm. find mm -hmm. something for you. <laughs> all, you know, all you have to say is, "What can I do?" You know, and we will find a job for you. We'll find something for you. But they like to be involved. Yeah. I mean, everybody likes to be involved, and mm -hmm. it makes a, a, a nice support group. And the women are just as, I mean, just just when somebody's patriots approved, they're just as happy for that person as if it was for them. You know, and it's not like how many patriots do you have or supplement you know, you have one, your main patriot, but how many supplementals, how many others in your family lineage. It's not about the number, it's not about who they were. It's just that every patriot is important. Every mm -hmm. one of them is important to all of us. Yeah. Take us through your genealogical process when you were inducted. Uh, Tell us about your experience when you discovered you had a direct ancestor in the revolution. Well, I kind of, or for myself, mm -hmm. I, I pretty much knew that oh. because my mom's family was very, very good at record keeping, although my mother did not belong to the DAR. But they were, they were very good about uh, research and their you know, books and everything. But I, but I had charted my family out years ago for my mom as a Mother's Day present. And so, you know, just like a, a family tree, you know, my mom and dad, their mom and dad, their mom and dad, and you stare a step and stare a step. And, and, and um, so I pretty much knew, but when I, but it took a while to get verified. I mean, it takes a little while. It took, I think it was well over a year. And um, I was, you know, Beth, I think uh, I joined the DER in 2015. And I believe that was the anniversary, see, of the 125th. So it was kind of cool, mm -hmm. and uh, but it was exciting. It was it was an honor, you know. It, you know, it was a real honor. And you meet such great women, and mm -hmm. and and you learn so much more about your country. You do. You learn so much about the sacrifices because the stories of our patriots are mm -hmm. unbelievable. I mean, they, you know, they they fought so hard. They, you know, and. It was during a time when they, you know, they had uh, the country was, you know, growing, and it was like they had so many children, and and then there was illness, and you know, it was a, such a struggle, and you know, it's just something to be honored that they went through that, and it's our way of kind of uh, being patriotic and paying them back. I mean, I often think 
I wonder what they think this many years later that we cared about, because we'll see wills, yeah. you know, of things being uh, preserved and things, or we'll see the gravestones, or mm. we'll see some memorabilia, and it's like, and we've had, um, we've had uh, programs uh, with our, on our day of, of our, our meetings where they will learn to, we'll bring some of the younger kids in, see if they can decipher calligraphy. Because so many things are written yeah. in calligraphy, and it's not like it's online or anything. It's a whole other way, and it takes a little bit of research to be able to um, decipher that. You know, because some of the stuff is a little hard to read. Absolutely, yeah, I'm thinking of like the Declaration of Independence. Oh yeah, or, yeah uh, exactly. Yeah, because it's all, you know, pen and paper. You know, with the ink. Yeah. Like that's but they had beautiful lost writing, heart, though. <laughs> but they had beautiful writing. There was no scribbles. It was just, <laughs> no, no. It, and there was no you are. It was you are. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. No shorthand. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. It wasn't one letter words. No. No, no. <laughs> Some ways it was a more elegant time. It was <laughs> elegant. It was. It was a very elegant time. And it was a very, it, it was a very uh, time of strength yeah. in our country. The really, you know, patriotism. I mean, we really, uh, so even like now, it's important. It's become even more important through all that we've gone through. Absolutely, yeah. to retain kind of our right, sense right, of identity. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. some of the best minds on the planet. I mean, we had Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin oh, right, Franklin. Right, and right, <laughs> right, right, right. A very bright man. To think they were so bright to have been able to form that Declaration of Independence, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, uh, you mentioned some of the uh, activities that the mm -hmm. DER engages in, mm -hmm. some volunteer activities. Mm -hmm. um, are there uh, any others you can talk about? or? Well, like for instance, uh, Jenny Stein and I and uh, Lisa Smith, you know, we've been working, and many others, I, I mm -hmm. a litany of names, but, and we're going to be doing that this, on the October 16th, we're doing a big service uh, program and packing up boxes. I mean, we give things to the food pantry, we send things to, to the soldiers, um, you know, we'll go to the area schools, and the, uh, all of those things, just, they, there's always something that we can do. There's mm -hmm. always, a, you know, like on Veterans Day, we've taken food down to the Veterans Hospital uh, for um, the, the soldiers and stuff, so it really, there's always a project, and the education, and like I said, in patriotism and historic and preservation of our, you know, like the cemeteries, because a lot of times that's where the research ends up going to, is if they can't find it in their family, then they, and if it's not the family Bible, or there's not a record, a lot of us will uh, go to the cemeteries and find the gravestones, yeah. and, and they'll clean up the, and things sometimes, uh, it needs to be freshened up, so uh, we'll get a group together and people will do that, and, and, um, the Reese Across America is a beautiful, um, they have that, it's a beautiful program. I don't know if anyone has ever seen it, but you will see it uh, at Arlington Cemetery, and it's, that is the big deal, that's a big one, because they bring in semi-trailer fulls of wreaths, and they place the wreath on every oh. stone, you know, and it's beautiful. In a smaller way, it is done in different chapters throughout the country, though. So. Oh, excellent. Mm -hmm. Um... So what is your current role, Angie? Do you have a title in the... I do. I have... Uh, I am hospitality chair. <laughs> now, uh, as I moved from Omaha, Nebraska to here, and I still... And I, and even people that do move uh, around in the country, they can find a chapter in their area, and they can still belong, have an associates with their main, their home chapter. Oh, they okay. want. Like, see, I still have my associate with Omaha, and I have one in uh, Galveston. You can only have two associates uh, uh, members. And then I joined it down here because our daughter is here. And um, when I came into it, uh, I'm kind of a peppy little person, so I came into it thinking, well, what could I do? And I, they asked me if I'd like to be hospitality chair. And so I provide um, the, the format for our luncheons uh, once a month after our meeting. And I do that to get the women together because, you know, when we have a meeting, it's it's like a meeting. I mean, there's organization, there, there's voting on, you know, things that we want to go into. We talk about what we're doing that day or whatever. And then a lot of times we scatter out. So it's kind of nice 
to go and have a lunch and be able just to, to visit and to be talking about, you know, our families, our patriots. I mean, it's, we're all very honored and proud of yeah. our heritage and stuff. So it gives us a time to really get to know each other. That's an important part yeah, of it, it bonding is. with you. Right, right, because you can't really do that in the meeting itself. It's mm -hmm. a little, you know, it's, it's just more organized. And mm -hmm. You can't talk over the speakers. And um, so that, that's, uh, that's, was, that is my role. Oh, excellent. Yeah. So can you tell us about any genealogical resources that the DAR offers for potential uh, you know, people who would like to join and are doing their research? All they have to do is call the, uh, the DAR chapter in their area, and the registrar will help them. And um, like I said before, uh, we have a lineage committee that we meet here at the library uh, once a month, plus we can go into the Clayton Library here in Texas, okay. and that's a big resource. But every every place has some, the registrar, I mean, they're there to guide, and they're there to help, and there's always somebody there to help the women mm -hmm. get, uh, get their verification approved. And and they'll work on them. I mean, it's it can be time. It can be many, many hours working to wow. try and, oh, yes. I mean, it's just not... It's just not like, oh, this is my patriot, boom, it's done. It's not. A lot of them take research, it takes time. It takes yeah, work. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it really is yeah. because you have to, because you have to make sure it's accurate. And just like I said, a lot of names can be the same. That's why the dates and everything are extremely important. What are some of your favorite experiences while serving in the DAR? If you can um, recount any. Oh, uh, there's so many. Um, well, I think, so. you know, some of the, the, we celebrated a 30th anniversary a couple of years ago, and I was in charge of uh, helping put that together. Um, and it, you, you just get to meet so many women who, in, in some ways, it's, it's strange, but they can kind of end up being a cousin, you know? <laughs> I mean, you know, from long, long ago. Or it's like, my family connected with your family, or they're from the same area. And so it's a socialization, and the women, they're just such a good source of community. Yeah. And, you know, and I, and I think that that makes our world better, that if we can all be better, then it just adds to everything. It adds to our children, and... Mm -hmm. and we teach. I mean, we're teaching them how, about our, our country, and we should be proud, and we should be honored by it, but definitely. And uh, so those in all, all of our little celebrations that we have, or when people, when we can help um, do things for the soldiers. I mean, that's like, I always say, I always would like to see them open up a box. What do they look like when they open up that box? <laughs> that look of joy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, or like when we've taken food down to the Veterans Hospital, and you see these young men, or older or whatever, that have uh, suffered, you know, some d distress just from, mm -hmm. from being in our military. And, um, and it's absurd that you, you give back to them. I think the giving back is probably the best part of it. And, uh, and I, I, there's just so many things that you can enjoy. Like I've said before, there's something for everybody in the DAR. There really is. Now we are going to talk a little bit about your art. You have oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> you have a uh, basically a, a display or exhibition in our community room, and a lot I of do. folks have been going in there and complimenting us at the circulation desk. Like, who is this artist? Really? Well, that's nice to hear. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, uh, how did you get into painting? Uh, well, Drew, I started painting eons ago. I, I painted when I was uh, I, I drew, and I, I painted when I was a child, and then. In high school and college, I really got into it, and I've just always, uh, I've done art forever. And I, since I retired I came and moved here to Texas, I decided to devote a lot of my time to my paintings. And so I've been able to do that. Of course, with COVID, it's given me a little extra time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I've, uh, but I do oil paintings, some acrylic, but mostly oils. I can. I'll paint anything that anybody would ask me to do sometime. You know, I'll sell them. Uh, you know, many, uh, I've had, it's nice that, the that I've had the opportunity to have them displayed here at the library and been able to sell some of the paintings. And, but it's just, um, I'm just kind of happy when people are happy about it, you know? I mean, even if, they, even if they're not sold, I'm just like, they enjoyed seeing it. You know, it's just like a little museum, I have my little museum over there. Yeah, 
that's what it feels like. So yeah. one of my favorite ones that you have is it's like this it's this moon or planet over mm -hmm. a body of water and it looks like mm -hmm. they're sort of blurring together. Yeah. It's like the the moon or planet is sort of watering the water. Right, yeah, and it's <laughs> like a, it's an overflow. Yeah, it's overflowing. That's why I think I called that painting. I think I called it overflowing. Like we overflow with emotions, you know, the our country, mm -hmm. weather you know, events, it's an over, our world is overflowing. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. And what are some other subjects and themes you like to paint? Oh, well, um, I paint all of our grand puppies. I do not have a dog, <laughs> but I have been asked to paint, I have painted all of our, ch all of our kids are grown, but I have painted every, all the dogs. There's, let's see, one, two, three, four, four dogs and a cat and a little kitty, and then I've had friends ask me to paint them. They're kind of fun to paint, you know, and I will tell you, having been here in Texas, I've decided I started painting horses, and I painted a longhorn, so, you know, these are things that I hadn't done before, and uh, so it's kind of fun, and um, yeah, I just, uh, like I said, it's a variety. I'll do the abstracts or whatever, but yeah. Oh. Yeah. And what's your uh, what's your process like? Does it take hours and days, or do you get it done in a couple? Well, some, you know, some... being an artist, you know, some of the stuff comes, boom, you know, yeah. it's like easy, you know, and then other ones, like, you can struggle with it, and so it just kind of depends, you know, but I, um, you know, it, it's just a, it's a, it's just something that I can do, like I said, it's a joy for me just to, even, for somebody just to even say they like my painting, you know, is, uh, that's enough, you know, I don't have to sell it, but it's just enough to, you know, to bring some joy into the world. Well, that's it. Well, thank yeah. you for serving our community with well, your art you. and your DAR patronage. Well, and, thank you. And uh, for those interested, do check out the DAR's website, um, and we will, we will put the link in at the bottom of the screen. And do check out Angie's art in the community room. Uh, Angie Ferraro, thanks for coming. Well, thank you, Drew. It's been a joy.